Bonjour mes amis. Hello my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? Thank you for coming today and welcome back to Senior Elementary Art Class. Our lesson today is called Putting on a Mask. For today's lesson, you will need a graphite pencil, an eraser, masking tape, watercolor paper, paints and brushes, a cup of water, a palette, and a paper towel or rag. Today's lesson is about masking. Masking is a technique used to cover an area temporarily in order to prevent it from being painted. It allows you to preserve delicate white areas or to develop special background effects that would otherwise be impossible. Let's look at the masking materials. Masking fluid is a liquid latex based product that is very effective at keeping small areas and thin lines white when painting on watercolor paper. The rubber prevents the paint from reaching the paper and is peeled off to expose the white paper left untouched. With a dedicated brush, artists can paint the fluid on any area they wish to leave unpainted. Masking tape can be placed in overlapping pieces to cover a large area, then carefully cutting away an any excess tape with a sharp craft knife. You can tear it lengthwise to produce an irregular edge around an element. It can also be cut into strips before applying it to the painting. Packing tape. This is the thin 2 inch wide plastic tape used to wrap parcels and boxes. It is transparent enough for you to see or sketch through it. You can quickly cover large areas with this tape. It is easier to cut out shapes from packing tape than from masking tape, but it can only be cut with a craft knife. It cannot be torn into smaller pieces. Masking tape should never be used as a crutch. Before using any masking material, ask yourself if you could just as easily save the area by painting around it. This piece is called Rainstorm. From the children's book, Cathedral. It's a painting by John Howe, done in 1987. Do you think John Howe masked the entire sky to keep it white? Of course not. All he did was paint the silhouettes of the spires in the background. What did John Howe mask to create this painting? All of the water coming from the gargoyles' mouths was masked before any painting was started. John Howe even put masking fluid on a toothbrush so he could create a splatter effect around the water with the masking liquid. This piece is called Fingolfin's Challenge to Morgoth. It's another painting by John Howe made with watercolor on paper. What element in this painting could not have been painted without masking it first? The character of Fingolfin would never have been paint painted without masking first. This character would have been masked in and then the entire painting done around him. Then once the masking was removed, John Howe would have carefully painted Fingolfin separately. Let's talk about multiple masking. This is a technique of repeated masking over previously painted areas in order to preserve colors and shapes. Multiple masking requires a paper with great endurance, such as 140 pound or 300 pound watercolor paper. This process takes time to complete because you must let the painting dry between each new masking layer. 
to successfully use this technique, you must mask elements moving from front to back through each overlapping layer and also work from light to dark colors. Our project today is called Mushroom Masking Magic. Let's start by drawing a large mushroom to the center right of the page. Here's a little tip. Think about placing it on imaginary rule of three guidelines. All right, now you can add a few more smaller mushrooms around the big one. Don't make these too small. It'll be a little hard to be able to mask them later. <laughs> now on the center left, draw a small cave opening shape. You can add some stalagmites or stalactites if you like. Now, try to leave this off those imaginary rule of three guidelines. Next, add three additional cave opening shapes around the first one. Make each one bigger than the last and make each one a little different. This is meant to create a perspective illusion, so keep the first rule of perspective in mind when you are drawing it. Now here I erased any lines that I know have been overlapped, just to make things a little more clear for myself. Now the next step is to rip small pieces of masking tape and fill in your mushrooms with it. Make sure the pieces lie flat on the paper and cover all the way up to the edge of the mushrooms. Make sure you don't go past the edge of the mushrooms because if you go past it, then that's going to be the new edge of your mushroom when you're painting. It's going to create a bit of a white halo effect around your mushroom. So make sure, just like when you're coloring, you're just filling, in, filling up, up to the line. All right, now prepare some reddish brown paint in your palette by blending red with burnt sienna. Blend with four brushfuls of water. Now, you can paint on top of the mass mushrooms, but you don't need to cover them up completely. But don't be afraid, 
painting just on the edge of the mushrooms or a bit overlapping the mushrooms will just make sure that the paint goes right up to the edge of the masking. So right now you're painting from the outside edge of the largest cave opening shape to the edge of the paper. I noticed mine was a bit too red, so I added a bit more brown to the mix and decided to paint right back over. It's still pretty red, but that's okay. Now blend a darker reddish brown in your palette with red and burnt sienna, but this time with three brush brushfuls of water. Now paint the space between the largest and second largest cave opening shape. There should only be just a little difference between the lightness and darkness of the colors. This one should just be a little bit darker. Now I want you once again to blend uh, an even darker reddish brown in your palette with red and burnt sienna, but this time you're only going to use two brushfuls of water. You might be able to start seeing a pattern here. Now once again, this should be just a little bit darker than the previous layer, and you're going to paint the space uh, between the second largest and third largest cave shape. Now you're going to paint your second darkest uh, reddish brown. This time you're only going to use one brushful of water. And you're going to be doing this between the smallest shape, painting in the smallest shape, between the smallest shape and the second smallest shape. And you can see I do paint a little bit over the masking. That's fine. That's what you want to do. Take your time to do this. Now, I always use the same size of brush, but you can change the smaller brushes if you'd like. So now you're gonna blend the darkest reddish brown in your palette with red, burnt sienna, and just a little bit of black. Be careful with the black too much will just turn the entire thing dark black. This time again, only use one brush full of water. Now paint your smallest cave opening shape and let the entire painting dry. Thank you, my friends, for joining Senior Elementary Art Class. Merci beaucoup. Now, I'm sure you made, uh, you had a really great start to your mushroom in a cavern. Next week, we're going to finish this piece. We're going to be taking off the masking and then adding, uh, painting in the details as well as painting in the mushrooms themselves. Prends soin de vous, take care of yourselves, and I will see you next week. Au revoir. <laughs>